Let's talk about the problem with push-ups. I don't want you making mistakes which are wasting time. Discover the true principles of progression for bodyweight mastery. Weak shoulders are a common problem. This issue manifests with a breakdown in exercise technique. Flared elbows are the most obvious sign. This form is cheating through less torque, less rotational force at the shoulders. This isn't inherently bad or dangerous, just less conducive for calisthenics. Most advanced bodyweight movements use tucked arms. It's only logical we apply the same technique in training. Please don't grind away with bad form. This builds bad habits and doesn't address the deficits. Take responsibility. Choose an exercise difficulty that allows you to keep sound form. Proper pushing will prove productive to those who patiently progress. If you're experiencing shoulder pain, consider external rotations. The rotator cuff is a dynamic stabilizer when pushing. Strengthening the posterior shoulder muscles is time well spent. Enjoy an improved tucked elbow technique during dynamic calisthenics. Don't neglect the serratus anterior. This muscle assists the scapula in protraction and upward rotation. Key movements in pressing. Training the serratus in a push-up has the best transfer to horizontal exercises. Training the serratus overhead has the best transfer to vertical exercises. Core control is a major push-up problem. As fatigue sets in, the lower back inevitably arches during push-ups. Towards the end of a set, bracing becomes the hardest part. Unfortunately, we often stop push-ups due to postural fatigue, not prime mover muscles. Bench pressing comes out ahead in this respect. Because we're fixed on the bench, core bracing won't impair efforts relative to failure. If the goal was pure hypertrophy or bench gains, weight training likely wins. This is where dips are superior to push-ups. We're able to fully stress our chest, shoulders, and triceps without core hindrance. Also, there's a greater capacity for absolute load progression. How much total weight you're pushing. This highlights why dips are a primary and push-ups a supplementary compound. Arching the lower back during vertical pressing is different. The core is not the culprit. The problem lies elsewhere in the kinetic chain. Banana back is a sign of weak shoulders. The larger pec muscles are compensating through posture change. The solution is to simply drop the intensity for correct technique. Choose an exercise instead which allows the torso to stay upright and the delts targeted. High reps are inefficient and redundant. Beyond the beginner level, pumping out endless reps of bodyweight push-ups is preposterous. It takes an unnecessary amount of time before reaching the final stimulating reps of a set. A lack of knowledge is the main reason people make this mistake. Unless you're a masochist for high reps or have endurance goals, consider the alternatives. Increasing range of motion is a good start. The larger pushing path raises difficulty and stresses you sooner. Maximizing the stretch through the working muscles is powerful for muscle gain. You also improve strength moving into deeper joint ranges. Seeking a full range is a principle worth applying universally. Progress your push-ups with more difficult exercises. Mechanical tension is now higher on the pushing muscles. This allows us to stimulate and stress the body much quicker. Having our sets take less time reduces unnecessary discomfort. This means we can reach close proximity to failure by doing less total reps. There are so many fun push-up variations in the world of calisthenics. We can bias different muscle groups by changing our hand placement. We can focus on one arm at a time and make unilateral gains. It's humbling how difficult the simple push-up can become with modification. These options will be more effective for muscle and strength gain compared to endless endurance. Clearly, there's a push-up option to keep everyone challenged from beginner to advanced. For those who don't want to get fancy, weighted push-ups have pros and cons. Avoid doing weighted push-ups like this. Our scapula is blocked, which makes the movement feel awkward. Getting the weight secured is cumbersome and risky. Balancing the weight becomes a limiting factor as opposed to prime mover fatigue. The downside being a partner is needed when going heavy. Dip belt push-ups for the win. Anchoring the weight over the mid-back is best. This allows unimpeded shoulder motion during the press. The elevated setup is where this approach shines. We're getting increased range at the upper body. The horizontal posture keeps the dip belt secured in place. Having the weights close to the stomach reduces swinging. 
Accessibility makes these a classic compound exercise. Dip belts are inexpensive and weight plates are everywhere. The environment can be modified based on availability and preference. The merit lies in long-term progressive overload. We can remain challenged for life by going heavier and heavier. Weighted vests are an alternate push-up option. The advantage being the load is acting more directly against the upper body. The disadvantage being the added cost and hindered scapular mechanics. At Fitness FAQs, we're a big fan of weighted push-ups. What do you think, gimmick or game changer? Here's another video to help you guys grow with calisthenics. Also subscribe so you never miss a new video. See you next time, legends.